Hey you guys, it's Brittany and welcome back. So today I am super excited to share with you guys a new segment that I am adding to my channel and it's called Makeup and Murder. Anyone who knows me knows that I am super into true crime. I love anything that is dealing with true crime, whether it's a documentary, docu-series, podcast. I'm super into true crime podcasts. And I thought that it would be a good idea to kind of combine makeup, which I'm falling in love with. Now, mind you, I am not a professional makeup artist. I am very much a novice. So I'm learning and I'm hoping to develop my skills as this segment goes along. So bear with me on my makeup skills. But I thought that it would be a good idea to combine the two so that we could have some fun while discussing some true crime. So before we get started, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. Make sure that you have hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. Some people feel finicky about listening to true crime and watching true crime documentaries, et cetera, et cetera. My purpose for watching it, following it, is just to make sure that I'm educated on the things that I need to be on the lookout for. Like I need a file that has all my passwords. I need a file that has all my bank account information. I need to make sure that I'm checking for certain things. I need to know that I'm giving people my location when I go to strange places. These are things and tips that I have learned from watching true crime documentaries or TV shows or listening to a podcast that's about true crime. So that's what I watch it for or listen for, just so that I can pick up tips on, you know, how to survive in these streets. The first true crime story I'm gonna share with you guys, and it should be familiar, fresh on your brains, because Netflix just released a documentary about this story. The Netflix documentary was called American Murder, The Family Next Door. So this is the story of Chris and Shanann Watts. So Christopher Watts and Shanann Rusick, I think I'm saying that right, they met back in 2010 and it all started because Shanann accepted Chris's friend request. See, that's red flag number one for me. Um, stop meeting people online, especially on Facebook. Stop it. Just stop accepting the friend request. Stop, stop meeting up with people that are on Facebook. You put yourself in so much danger, unknown danger when you do something like that. Let's just stop that, everybody. But so they met in 2010 via Facebook. And um, shortly after they got married, I think they got married in 2012. And they purchased their first home together in 2013 in Colorado. And then they had their first daughter shortly after that. And their first daughter, this name was Bella. And in 2015, they had their second daughter, Celeste, who they called Cece. And both of these pregnancies were pretty much like a godsend for Shanann. Shanann was battling lupus. So being able to have children with such a condition was a blessing for her. But right before having their second daughter, things weren't going so well for the Watts family. They ended up filing for bankruptcy and they actually also ended up being sued by their homeowners association for not paying their HOA fees. But eventually they seemed to work together and work through the hard times just as you should when you're in a marriage and they were able to kind of get back on their feet. Chris ended up getting a job at an oil company and Shanann worked, I believe she worked as an HR specialist, but she also mainly worked for an MLM. She was an independent representative for an MLM company. So through all of this, Shanann was extremely active on social media. I mean, she shared her entire life, entire life on social media and she would share you know how wonderful her husband is and how uh, blessed she is to have you know her husband in her life and the kids and you know having such a great dad so in june of 2018 shanann of course posted on facebook she had to share it with everybody but she surprised chris 
with a shirt that said, oops, we did it again. And that was her way of announcing that they were pregnant with their third child. As much as Chris tried to pretend that he was happy, he was less than enthused. All he was able to muster was, that's awesome, which is not a good sign for a husband who agreed to have a child. They've been having these conversations that they think that they should have another child. They think that they're ready to have another child. They're stable now. And for you to be so ready to have another child, I would expect more than a, that's awesome. If my husband said that to me, child. So after the announcement, shortly after the announcement of them expecting another child, of course, Shanann just continues on as if, you know, everything is normal. She's super happy. She's gushing over her family and her husband as always. And in the meantime, Chris has started first what was just an emotional affair, but after a couple of weeks, obviously it turned into a physical affair. And the name of his mistress was Nicole Kessinger. He would allow this woman into their home while his family being Shanann and the two girls were away. He would go on trips when the family was away. Like there was no limit for this. And all the while he was lying to Nicole saying, yeah, I'm married with kids, but we're separated and the divorce is almost final. So she's thinking nothing of it. Obviously she's taking his word for it, which ask for the paper, sis. Ask for proof. I've been there. Anywho, so now Chris has someone else on his mind. He's spending most of his time with someone else. His wife will call, he doesn't answer, things like that. So the relationship starts to get tense. He doesn't want you know, any physical contact with his wife and she's feeling neglected and she's voicing that out to um, her friends and her family. But she doesn't think that He's having an affair. She thinks that she's done something wrong and he's not talking about it and they're just trying to work through it as a couple. So while all of this is going on, an incident happens between Shanann and Chris's family, his parents specifically. Um, they visit his parents and they're supposed to have a birthday party for one of the daughters and the daughter Celeste is allergic to nuts. And the mom, Chris's mom, decides to buy ice cream with nuts in it and tries to give it to Celeste. Now, of course, Shanann being a mom, she freaks out because her daughter is allergic to nuts. And the mom, Chris's mom, responds, oh, she didn't know or she forgot or whatever the story was and she was not trying to purposely cause any harm to Celeste, her granddaughter. But Shanann is, is not trying to hear it. Shanann goes off and she, you know, basically argues with his mom and the dad is there as, as well and doesn't really say anything either during the argument. And neither did Chris. Chris didn't really say anything. So this started a whole new issue with Chris and Shanann. Chris felt like Shanann was kind of driving a wedge between his family and her and kind of forcing her to choose. And Shanann was saying that you know, Chris basically was a coward for not standing up to his parents on behalf of his daughter. And she made all these accusations that his mom did it on purpose to try to hurt Celeste to get back at Shanann. And she called them evil people and said that his dad was just as bad as the mom because he didn't say anything. And I think that was a bit much. I feel like being upset because a grandparent forgot that their grandchild that they don't see often is allergic to nuts. I feel like it's fine to be upset. I feel like it's perfectly fine to protect your child and be upset and voice your opinion about, you know, my daughter has an allergy and we told you about this. That's something that you don't forget as a grandparent. But I think she took it a step too far saying his family was an evil family and she was trying to purposely hurt the daughter to get back at Shanann because she doesn't like Shanann. I think that's a bit much. I don't think a parent would 
potentially seriously harm or possibly kill a grandchild of theirs, a, a daughter of their sons, just because they don't like the mom. Slow down, sis. That's just, you jumping, you, you reaching. She was reaching. So in addition to that, there was another incident where, and I feel like it may have just been like a carryover from the last argument they had about her parents, his parents, but there was another incident where they went to the ultrasound and it was to find out the sex and she had planned like a gender reveal party, et cetera, et cetera. And I guess she said that Chris was cold during the ultrasound. And because of that, she chose to cancel the gender reveal party. Now, I am all about being an advocate for the victim, no matter what type of person you are. No one deserves to be hurt. No one deserves to be murdered at all. So I'm not here to victim shame in any way. And I, I never will. I'm just calling it out. Sis was a little much. She was. From the conversations that we see, especially in the documentary, you can see the text messages. Just looking at that makes me feel like Sis was a bit much. She was a lot to handle. And I can see in-laws not being too happy with that type of person. So it, it just goes downhill from there. She gets to a point where like she's texting and telling her friends that um, she's basically like at the point where she's throwing herself at her husband. She's laying in the bed naked, waiting for her husband to get out of the shower and he rolls over and goes to sleep. That's the one sis, that's, that's when you know something's wrong. It's not just something's happened, we've been arguing. He's dipping somewhere else. All of that happens and she wants to talk about it. She wants to work it out. And it seems like they have a conversation and she tells her friends, yeah, that was the best conversation yet. We really, you know, we've agreed to kind of work on things and everything sounds like they're really working on their marriage, right? So now Shanann's dealing with a bunch of problems. So, you know, she doesn't have a great relationship with her in-laws. Her in-laws decided that they weren't coming to the baby's birthday party. They blocked her on social media. I mean, they pulled out all the stops. They did not want to deal with Shanann. And she's also dealing with a husband who seemingly doesn't care for her anymore. Is not interested in her in any way. She's pregnant with their third child, their son, Nico. Let's make sure to say his name as well. Um, and it's just hard. Life is hard. She's trying to figure it out. She's trying to power through. She's trying to keep her family together. And it's just, it's, he's just not on the same page. He's just not who he used to be, according to her. So while all of this is happening, she is, you know, telling her friends, her best friends, especially this one best friend in particular, I call her a DAB and that's a down ass bitch. Let me tell you something. I'm a big supporter of not telling all your business to your friends when you're in a committed relationship. There comes a point when some things need to be kept private. And the reason why I say this is because when you go and you tell your friends and family all the bad things that are happening, and a lot of the times you're not spilling the good tea to your friends. You're only spilling that scolding hot tea that's going to burn to your friends. So when you're going and you're telling your friends and family all the bad things that are happening in your home and your relationship, and you're not telling any of the good things, there is only hatred that is going to develop. If you continue to tell just bad information about your spouse, your boyfriend, what do you expect? They don't know anything else. So stop doing that. I say all of that to say, if you are going to spill this golden hot tea to anybody, make sure it's a down ass bitch like Nicole. Baby, I don't know if you saw that documentary, but if you're gonna tell anybody what's going on or everything that's going on in your life, it needs to be one of Nicole's breeds, okay? Because she did not play. Sis was on it. When I say sis was on it. So we're at the point where, you know, she said that they've had this great talk and they are working on their relationship now and 
she's going on a trip to Arizona. So she leaves, but she, she writes her husband this touching letter. Pretty much it's telling him, you know, she loves him and she wants to do anything to make it work. While she is gone on this trip, her husband decides that, you know, instead of being a, a good husband and a good father, he decides that he's going to get a babysitter and go out with his mistress. So he tells his wife that, oh, I'm going out with, you know, some of my coworkers, we're going to the game, et cetera, et cetera. He decides that instead of going anywhere with his coworkers, he is going to instead go out with Nicole. Of course, Shanann does what I would do. Sis checks the bank account. Sis looks at the bank account and she says, uh-uh, this don't look like you going anywhere with friends from work. This looks like you went out to dinner. These charges look like dinner charges. So she has that in the back of her head while she's on a trip. So, you know, when she was coming home, she was coming home to have a conversation. So she gets home at about two in the morning and her friend Nicole is the one who drops her off. Now, the next day, Shanann is said to have a prenatal doctor's appointment and the doctor point, doctor's appointment comes and goes. No Shanann. She was supposed to have a business meeting. And Shanann was a no-show for the business meeting. DAB Nicole notices all of this. She's been trying to call Shanann. She's been texting Shanann. And there has been absolutely just no response from Shanann whatsoever. So when she realizes this, she said, no, no, ma'am. By 140, that day, she was calling the police. She calls the police. She was waiting for the police at Shanann's house. Sis does not play about hers, okay? Get you one. She also calls Shanann's husband, as she should have, and told him, you need to come home. Shanann is nowhere to be found. He also tells this to the police. Oh, she told me she was going to a friend's house with the kids, but he don't know what friend. Since when? Who has been taking that? Who? Since when? Anywho, the police cannot go into Shanann's house until Chris arrives. So once Chris arrives, they go into the home. When they go into the home, they notice that Shanann's purse, keys, medicine, and her phone are all at the house. But no Shanann. Her ring was also there as well in the bedroom. They go and check the garage, Shanann's car, with the two kids' car seats are still in the garage. What mother is going to go to a friend's house, how did you get there, Shanann, with her car there? Who is going to transport their two small children in a vehicle with no car seat? But let me get back to the story. So after they go in and they see that this, all this stuff is still there and he's already told the police that, oh, she went to see a friend's house with, to see a friend with the kids. He also admits to the police that he and Shanann had a very emotional conversation before he wore, left for work that morning. Now, I've seen enough true crime stories to know that when the husband said, yeah, we, we were having troubles or yeah, we had an argument right before she went missing. Nine times out of 10, he did it. So after they have this conversation, the neighbor kind of interjects and says, hey, y'all, my cameras captured the driveway so I can see what is going on in Chris's and Shanann's driveway. So the police go over with Chris to see if they can find any information, if they can see Shanann leaving, um, if they can see any movements or any people that were suspicious or anything like that. So they go over and honey, all they see is early in the morning, the wee hours of the morning, Chris backing his truck into their driveway, which he never does 
and he's loading up his truck. Supposedly, he says he's loading up his truck for the day. The neighbor said, mm -mm, he don't ever do that. And we're also told by the neighbor that, you know, he's seeming real fidgety and he don't ever do this. He don't ever act like this. So the next day, Chris hops on television and, you know, he does what, you know, any normal husband would do when his wife and children go missing. And he pleads to have his children returned and his wife returned safely. So after he's gone on television, he's cried for his wife to come home. He's cried for his kids to come home. And he goes to the police station the next day. Obviously, they question him. He is asked to take a polygraph. And another thing that I have learned from watching true crime documentaries, listening to true crime podcasts, never take a polygraph. If you've been asked to take a polygraph, they are not there to help you. They are suspicious of you and it does not help you in any way. Um, polygraphs, just in general, polygraphs are very, very inaccurate, um, which is why they are not allowed in court. Um, so there is no point in taking a polygraph. Don't, don't do it. Also, don't talk to the police without a lawyer present. No matter your guilt, your innocence, don't do it. Don't talk to the police without your lawyer. So he goes to take a polygraph and he fails. He fails miserably. So the police are at the point where they are like, look, we know you did it. You need to tell us why you did it. So he says, you know, can I talk to my father first? So my whole thought process, as soon as he said, can I talk to my father is he thought that whatever story he told, which was a lie, he was going to get sympathy from his father. And he thought that he would get sympathy from his father because his father was not very fond of Shanann. He tells his father, oh, you know, Shanann, she killed the girls. She smothered the girls. So when she did that, I had no choice but to kill her. Now, who was supposed to believe that? I know your dad don't like her, but as fierce as she fought your parents about nut allergies and having ice cream, offering ice cream to Celeste because she has a nut allergy and putting her in danger, nobody's buying that. So that's what she he tells his dad. And after he tells his dad that, of course, he tries to tell that same story to police and the police obviously arrest him. So he gets arrested and the police ask him, can he take them where the bodies are? So he agrees. So Chris proceeds to take them to his one of his work sites. So he directs them to a shallow grave. And this is where he has buried the body of Shanann. His wife that is pregnant with their son, Nico. And this is the worst part. He takes them to two oil tanks, large oil tanks. And the oil tanks have a hatch at the top. And it's a small hatch, very small hatch. But this is where he disposed of his two beautiful little daughters. And this is graphic, so sorry. He had to stuff those babies into that, that tank. Ultimately, Chris is charged with three counts of murder. He is also charged with two counts of murder and the victim being under 12. He's also charged with unlawful termination of a pregnancy. Now for that one, that one hurt me because I felt like, and I'm sure many people also felt like he should have got another murder charge because that baby was a human. That baby was a little boy. They named that baby already. So he deserved another murder charge for that. Before he could go to trial, he ended up pleading guilty for a while, he stuck with the story of, I did it because Shanann, 
hurt the kids. You know, he's in jail. He's been convicted. He pled guilty. Two months after that, he changes his story. He comes back and he says, well, that's not really what happened. So what really happened is me and Shanann got into our emotional conversation. So we got into pretty much an argument and he told her that, you know, he was ultimately having an affair and that he wanted out of the marriage. And of course, Shanann is upset and she says, you'll never see the kids again. And he, of course, decides that he's going to take it into his own hands. He takes the girls with him to bury their dead mother. They were alive up until they got to the work site. So once they get to the work site, he smothers the younger daughter and the older daughter is there and watching all of this happen. And I'm sure she's mortified. And after he does that, he proceeds to smother his older daughter as well, but not before her asking, are you going to do the same thing to me that you did to my sister and my mom? And that little girl fought for her life. And to be a parent and to do that to your child, that's just complete. That's just the most disgusting thing in the entire world. And I feel completely like disgusted that a dad, a father, who was such a good father from all of the videos and everything that Shanann posted. It was always him playing with his daughters. And, you know, you see a video of one of the little girls singing how much her dad's a hero. And for him to do something like that is just despicable. Like, I never understand why you can't just leave your wife. I don't get it. Walk away. You're gonna get caught, walk away. But that is the story of Chris and Shanann Watts and their adorable family. My heart goes out to that family to have to lose your daughter and your three grandkids. It's extremely, it's just unimaginable. And my heart truly goes out to all of those people that were involved. All right, here is the finished look. So I hope you guys liked it. This was very exciting for me. This was my very, very first time trying to do makeup at the same time as trying to talk through a story. And I get excited when I'm talking through these types of stories because you just learn so much from these. Like we learned never to take a polygraph. We learned don't be, you know, making friends and starting relationships with random people that you meet on Facebook. We learned check them bank accounts, sis. I hope you guys enjoyed my first makeup and murder. And I hope you guys will join me for more. It will only get better. I am so excited because I did my first cut crease semi cut crease whatever you want to call it i think it looks great for my first time tell me what you guys think down below of the makeup look also i want to hear your thoughts on this story this story is bananas but make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you have not already and make sure that you hit that notification button so that you get notified whenever i post my new videos other than that I love you guys. Bye.